Hello everyone and welcome to the penultimate round of the Gibraltar 2020 uh, chess festival. It's Parham Maksudlo versus Andrei Sipenko, uh, two of the, the leaders of the tournament and it's uh, it's really quite a game. I was going to show it yesterday but then it uh, really uh, lasts for a very, very long time and I thought okay I'm gonna I'm gonna do it tomorrow uh, but was I surprised uh, and I will uh, show you what I mean by this. And also a lot of you uh, said that uh, you saw that uh, Pragnananda defeated Chahriar Mamedyarov in round 8 uh, but you couldn't find the moves that's because the game never happened uh Mamidyarov is ill and he withdrew from the tournament uh, no idea no idea what's going on but uh, uh must be pretty serious as well you don't just uh uh well uh with, withdraw from the tournament when you are basically amongst the leaders uh so i, I will keep you informed uh that being said let's check out this uh, really really crazy game so maxulu opens with e4 we have e5 by esipenko knight f3 knight to c6 and bishop to c4 so uh, the italian game is on the board we have bishop to c5 uh, and now of course the evans gambit was not played in this game so c3 uh continuing in the in the calm style uh, we have knight to f6 and now d3. So the Joko Piano game is on the board. We have castles, castles, uh, and now d5 as white allowed it. So, of course, black will play it. We have e captures on d5, knight captures, and now knight b to d2. So this has all been played uh, a lot of times, as, as there, and there's a lot of theory on this um, uh, well, line knight to b6 attacking the bishop, and now uh, mostly uh, people play bishop to b5 here, which makes sense. Uh, you keep an eye on on your d3 pawn, and you also pressure the knight. Uh, while you pressure the knight, means you also pressure the e5 pawn. But here, Maksudlu actually went for bishop to b3, and he he's offering the d3 pawn. Now this has been played only once before, uh, in 2012, uh, and that game actually ended in a draw. Uh, so let's see what happens here. Uh, Esipenko uh, rises up to the challenge. He he claims the pawn. Queen captures on d3. We have bishop to c2 pushes the queen back. Queen back to d8, uh, where the, the queen is safest, and now queen to e2. And now uh, attacking the e5 pawn, and there is one game, one we've mentioned, where bishop to g4 was played, but here we have bishop to d6, just defending the pawn, uh, and it is as of move 11 that we have a completely new game. So let's see what Maksudlu prepared uh, for us. He, he goes b4, he starts just expanding on the queen side, he says he's he's much better uh, developed and he wants to take uh, even more space. So queen to e7, uh, de uh, developing the queen. Now that the light square bishop will be developed, the rooks will be connected. We have rook to e1 uh, and now f6, just strengthening that e5 pawn. Uh, but it also opens up this diagonal. So you, you win some, you lose some. Uh, we have a4, uh, now preparing to... Uh, grab more space with a5, but uh, of course uh, black now plays a5 with b5, pushes the knight back, knight to d8, and now knight to d4. Uh, here offering a knight for a nice queen trade, and if you go for this, then it's um, it's basically just a, just a trade down into somewhat of an equal uh, endgame. Rook captures, d captures on c3, knight e4, and now uh, it's uh, not all that easy to develop uh, with with uh, black. You have to be careful. The two bishops, this one's coming to b3, this one's coming to a3, are going to control a lot of squares. C3, c7 is under attack if you develop the bishop. Uh, it could be could be. Uh, very difficult. For example, if you try to just kick away the rook, just uh, rook e8 check. Rook f8 and bishop b3. You cannot move the king due to checkmate, so you have to block with the knight. And now captures, captures, bishop to a3 check, and it's just a... Uh, uh, just a very, uh, well, uh, unpleasant position to play for black. I if you went uh, to e8 instead and rook to e1 is very strong. Uh, and, uh, well, for the moment you are up material, but, but not for long. You're going to lose this pawn and, uh, well... Uh, the, uh, the rook will find his way uh, up up the board at some point. Uh, but okay, uh, after this uh, knight to d4 move, uh, Esipenko goes for g6 instead, takes away the f5 square from the knight, uh, and now f4, uh, trying to, to, to now get black to capture. Uh, but we have knight to e6 now, offering a trade of knights, now f captures on e5, and knight to f4, and this is where the magic happens. Now here, uh, obviously you should move the queen. Your queen is under attack and if something like queen e4 is played then queen captures on e5. Uh, let's say knight attacks queen, we probably have a queen trade and the game continues. However, 
Uh, here, Maksudlu played e captures on d6, and this is just crazy. You might think, okay, uh, a queen for a queen, but not really. This queen hangs with check. So it might seem like uh, Maksudlu blundered his queen, but he actually uh, gave up uh, gave up his queen for, for two minor pieces and a lot of activity. So okay, uh, knight captures on e2. With check, we have rook captures on e2, and now you cannot go after the pawn. If you go after the pawn, then again, the bishop pair from hell uh, emerges uh, after king g7, bishop to a3, and now you might even uh, lose more material. Uh, but even after queen d8, you could go bishop to e7, uh, and now... Uh, the, the queen doesn't really have any any squares to go to uh, for example you could move the queen queen eight but now bishop captures here just uh, w wins back the queen so uh, a lot of a lot of ideas here so instead Esipenko just goes back queen back to d8 and now bishop to b3 with check king h8 and the bishop to a3 now now the bishop pair is fully operational and uh, black has to decide where to go from here we have c captures on d6 and now rook a to e1 uh, the rooks are nicely doubled and the knight occupies uh, an excellent d4 square you still have to figure out what to do with this knight but uh, all, all in due time so bishop to g4 uh, esipenko develops the bishop with an attack on the rook so he doesn't waste time rook e3 and now uh, d5 uh, esipenko gives up the rook uh, for for some activity and also he prevents this bishop from uh, well from pretty much doing anything but this bishop is not pretty bad uh, and uh, Maxulu doesn't want to trade here he prefers to keep his bishop pair he goes h3 forces this bishop back bishop to d7 and now knight to e6 uh, and okay uh, the queen and the rook are under attack so bishop captures we have rook captures and the queen to c7 now uh, going after the c3 pawn so rook to e3 defending the pawn and now rook f7 not allowing any rook to e7 uh, tricks uh, so what do you do here uh, bishop to d6 first uh, uh, an in between move attacking the queen queen to c8 and now bishop back to a3 asking Esipenko what, what do you want to play here so Esipenko decides that it's time to uh, grab one of the bishops knight to c4 but Maksudlu doesn't mind since this bishop really isn't doing anything here Bishop captures, d captures, and now knight to f3. Uh, queen back to d7. Now again, you're trying to uh, get this final rook into the game. Knight to d4 now. And here you might... Uh, okay, you're up a queen, but how do you activate pieces? This rook doesn't really have a good square. Your c pawn is blocking the c file. You cannot own the e file because white owns the e file. And, uh, well, the other rook pretty much doesn't, doesn't have a, a good plan either. So queen to d5. First you activate the queen. Uh, we have bishop to e7. Now hoping for bishop captures on f6 uh, with check, but queen g5 defending. Uh, bishop back to a3. Again, Maksudu says, okay, you come up with a plan. Uh, we have h5. Uh, we have bishop back to e7, and then now comes king to h7. We have knight to f3 now attacking the queen. Queen to f5, and now uh, knight to d4, pushing the queen back. Uh, and now queen to b1 with check. King h2, and now finally rook a to e8. With the bishop being on e7, uh, it is possible to, uh, to activate the rook. However, it comes with the price of a pawn. So bishop captures on f6. We have rook captures on e6, rook captures on e6, and now, uh, well... Uh, you could try and play something here, but uh, it's not all that easy to find a move for black. Uh, all, all of the pawns are nicely protected, and uh, you are uh, probably going to see something like knight f3, knight to g5 check. Uh, could be could be somewhat uh, of, a, of a problem after, uh, let's say, somehow you figure out how, how to defend the bishop. Could, be, could become unpleasant. So here, uh, Esipenko instead decided to go for rook captures on f6. Uh, he doesn't want all of these pieces dancing around the black king. So rook captures on f6 and then now king g7. <clears throat> uh, pushing the rook back. Rook to e6 and then now queen to c1. Going after the c3 pawn. We have rook e7 check. King f6 and now rook captures on b7. Uh, winning the b7 pawn and now creating a passed b pawn. We have queen captures on c3 and then now rook to b6 with check. King to g7 and now knight e6 check. We have king to h6 and now rook to c6. Making room for his pass pawn to start marching forward. We have queen to e5 with check. King h1 and now queen to a1 with check. King to h2. And now feel free to pause the video and try to find how to continue this game with black. As you are basically winning, you just have to uh, win it uh, properly. 
Uh, so, well, I'll give you a couple of seconds. So, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding, well, it's not, not an easy uh, maneuver to find. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, quickest way uh, to, to go for it is uh, queen to e5 with check. Uh, now, you force the king to move back. King g1, now queen e1 check. King back to h2, and now queen to e4. And here, with the king being on h2, knight here, rook here, you pretty much put white into sort of a tukswang. Uh, as uh, you cannot move the rook anywhere up and down since the knight hangs. Uh, if you start pushing the passed pawn, uh, the, the rook hangs. And there really isn't much you can do. You can start by weakening your, your king's position, but it will only make it easier for black to, to uh, uh, check you and maybe connect to some uh, double attacks. So knight to d8, now defending the rook, and now queen f4 check. King h1 and queen to d2. And here you are just going to promote your passed pawn and that's it. Uh, of course, the knight is hanging as well, so not much you can do here. Uh, let's say you move the knight, knight e6, but now just c3. And now if you both start uh, escorting your passed pawn, problem is this pawn uh, queens with check, so after captures, captures check, king h2, queen b1, you are nicely guarding the queening square, uh, black wins the game. However, uh, after this uh, king to h2 move, uh, Esipenko did not go for this maneuver, uh, qu queen e5 to, well, okay, to e1 back to e4. Uh, instead, he went for queen captures on a4. And it makes sense. Uh, you White still cannot push the pawn because the rook hangs, but he overlooked something, something very important. So feel free to pause the video and figure out what he overlooked here uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that the knight covers g5 and g7. And if the rook came to h8, this will be made. So uh, the move we we need to play, and of course the move uh, Maksudlu played, uh, is rook to c8. Now unpinning, you will be able to push your pass pawn, and of course black cannot capture because rook to h8 is checkmate. So here g5, uh, freeing the g6 square for the king, but now b6. Now Maksudlu starts pushing his pass pawn. Queen to b4, attacking the pawn here, also threatening queen uh, to d6 check. Uh, however, now comes knight to d8, another excellent move. Uh, it's, it's excellent because now queen d6 check, king h1 and queen captures pawn, results in rook to c6 check, picks up the queen. And after captures captures, the knight will e easily stop uh, bo both of the queen side pawns, you will activate your king, and most likely uh, a draw will, will happen. So after knight to d8, we have c3 by black, uh, and now b7. The knight also guards the b7 square, so that's a, that's a plus. We have c2, and now the, you cannot go after this because just uh, captures, captures, and black gets another queen into the game. So here Maxulu has to capture, and now uh, queen to d6 with check. King h1, uh, we have queen to d1 with check, and now the king has to again come to h2, but now queen captures on d8, guarding the queening square. We have rook to c8, Again, threatening to promote here, and now we have queen to d6 with check. King h1, we have queen to d1 with check. King h2, uh, we have queen to d6 with check. King h1, and here again, queen to d1 with check. King h2, and it was in this position on move 62 that uh, Maksudlu and Despenko agreed to a draw, as the, no progress can be made by either sides. Uh, black can only continue checking, he cannot allow uh, this uh, a pawn to become a queen, and other than that, there's really not, not much to do. So really, really insane game, uh, beautiful pawn sacrifice by Maksudlu, then an even greater queen sacrifice by Maksudlu. Uh, if you run this game through the engine, the engine will tell you that uh, Maksudlu's queen sacrifice is just bad, that uh, uh, there... That uh, that he's lost, but uh, then again, who knows? He uh, as he did prepare this pawn sacrifice, he might have had some sort of a super engine where he prepared this line that uh, that says that the queen sacrifice is actually okay. Because if you look at it from a human's perspective, uh, you actually do get a lot of play uh, a, a queen for two minor pieces. So uh, I, I guess it's possible, but uh, either way, it was really really a beautiful game by both of them, uh, and in the end, uh, a, a draw is uh, you know. Uh, well deserved by both of them. Uh, so a, a queen is very strong, but uh, you know minor pieces uh, do 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 have their magic, so to say.
Uh, but yeah, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, this was the penultimate round. And going into the final round, both Maksudu and Esipenko, uh, along with Van Hao and David Paravian, uh, are leading the tournament. So uh, we'll see what happens there or if someone can catch up to them. Someone, maybe maybe Maxim Vashiel Lagrav or there are some other big names still with uh, half a point uh, trailing behind them. So we'll see what happens. So uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Emperor, Captors Captors, uh, Andrei, Andrei Chopic, uh, Alexandru Mikhail Savescu, and Alexander Schaefer for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the, well, coverage. We are all at the last round of the Gibraltar Masters, and then continuing the Morphe Saga until our next big event. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.